Ever since the forming of land and sea, there have been coastal zones. They are fantastic and beautiful places where the sea meets land. The stunning beauty comes with resilience and vitality. China's island province of Hainan is encircled by the warm Pacific Ocean, forming long coastal zones. This is an amazing boundary that changes all the time. Sometimes it is land. Sometimes it is water. At the ebb, it is exposed to wind, rain, and the scorching sun. The land prevails. When the tide is in, it is called back by the sea turning into an aqua world. In the ever-changing region, only the strongest and fittest survive. They hide in coral reefs, between the rocks, in the crevices, and in the sand holes. In every corner that we haven't explored before, there might be a world full of vigorous lives. For most plants, the intertidal zone is forbidden. The land is flooded with water. There is hardly any oxygen, but the salinity is high. With its perfect adaptability, the mangrove became the only tree species that can grow in the intertidal zone. They use strong prop roots to lift themselves up. Oxygen is absorbed through tiny lenticels all over the trunk. Other than that, by pointing the air roots straight into the air, they can breathe in the tide for 10 hours with an abundance of oxygen. This proves the survival of the fittest and their way of reproducing is almost a miracle. For most plants, by sending the offspring away, their lives continue. Mangrove seeds are taken away by the tide. This is their survival strategy. After the seeds fall, they follow the tide and the current on a distant journey.
being carried by the receding tide, this seed chose an excellent spot and stopped. Here it has plenty of sunshine and sufficient amounts of silt. Tidal movements will help bury the seed firmly in the soil until it takes roots and sprouts. This may take hours or even longer, but there is time enough for it to grow. Its siblings seem to have no such luck. They didn't find an ideal place. The sun can hardly penetrate the dense foliage. Lack of sunlight usually means death. Not all seeds make it. But mangroves have adapted and increased their output. Every mangrove tree produces about 600 seedlings every year. Some at least will survive. In China, half of the mangrove plant species are rare and endangered. This seed is unable to fight the current for now. It must grow roots downward and auxiliary air roots as quickly as possible. That way, in nearly 30 years, it may become a formal member of the mangrove family. Mangroves are an important part of the coastal zone. They separate the land from the sea. And yet they glue them together. With dense canopies, stout and curved trunks, and intertwined roots, they provide creatures of all sizes with a suitable living environment. In this special ecosystem, all living things are intricately connected. Even if not predator and prey, they compete for food and space. This balance requires the guidance and regulation of the ocean. Trees don't move with the tide. Animals have, however, mastered the law of nature. They follow the rhythms of the ebb and flow and adjust their biological clocks. Canopies that block out the sky are home to the egrets, who sleep well during the high tide. They are the first residents in the mangroves to wake up surrounded by the sea. But they know better when the tide will recede again. These mangroves have grown over the years and have developed a perfect tidal channel system. Between tides, they can regulate the salinity of seawater in the area. 
This is a life channel for the mangroves and an ideal place to forage for the egrets. In the canopy, compared with the carefree egrets, the Asian weaver ants are bustling about. Their quest for abundant food is the key to enlarging their colony. The dense canopy serves as their hunting ground. Any trespasser is considered a potential prey. Tender leaves are the caterpillar's favorite. However, this is a fatal temptation. It encounters the weaver ant. The difference in size made the ant retreat temporarily. It needs assistance. As a qualified scout, what it needs to do at the moment is send the message back to the colony. By secreting a special pheromone and with the help of their antennae and body language, other ants receive the information and quickly pass it on. For relatively large preys that usually require more effort, hunting in packs is the best choice for the ants. Their near-perfect collaboration always brings rewards. The weaver ants almost never enjoy their prey on the spot. It's a long way back to the colony, but they have to bring it back. Food is the foundation of a huge family. Weaver ants are also called mangrove ants. Many of them spend their whole life in the mangrove trees. The thick leaves serve as building material for their houses. Several new generations are born every year, so they have to keep building new nests to meet the expansion of the family. For the weaver ants, the trees are their rightful territory. They will stop intruders from harming the mangroves. The ants solve problems for the trees, and the trees offer them an ideal shelter. Now they need to clean their bodies to better receive signals and distinguish the smell of their peers. The army is assembled. It is ready to set off again. The Turinids are always slow. Despite the sanctuary offered by the mangroves, they can't be totally separated from water sources. It's time to go down.
The egret doesn't feel the same way as the Latoranids. What it sees is that it's hunting time. developed root system is like a powerful filter, retaining the nutrients brought by the tide on the mudflat. All creatures here have access to high quality food sources. Dwelling on a higher spot, the red clawed crab is among the first batch to enjoy the meal in the mangroves. tide is yet to recede. Calling crabs hiding in the depressions can't wait to stretch up. They have another elegant name. Fiddler crab. Because male crabs have an iconic oversized cella. This is their main weapon. The mudflat is crowded now. The crabs have overlapping foraging grounds. The key to scramble for food lies in the manner and strength. The seemingly fierce fight doesn't cause considerable injury. There is plenty of food to choose from. Fighting to the death for a single bite is not worth it. But holding a huge violin can be an inconvenience for the males. Under such circumstances, they can only use the normal size cella to grab food, while most other crabs have both to use. This is the crucial moment of the day. They have to eat their fill before the next high tide. Now is the time for a frantic feast. Racing with the tide, it is a common goal of all local dwellers. The mud flat after the ebb is a festival for gluttons. These crabs are unsung heroes, preserving the mangrove ecosystem. Mangroves wouldn't thrive without their help. The nests they dig right beside the mangroves serve as necessary vents for the trees to grow. And by loosening the sand to seek food, they indirectly provide the mangroves and other living creatures with air and moisture.
In the eyes of birds, those dining on the mud flat make a luxurious meal. Food is abundant. All they need is good skills. Predator. It knows how to drive out hidden prey. Perfect coordination between feet and beak brings a steady flow of delicacies. The mud flat is large. Birds seek food in a relatively small area. For the crabs, it is either filling their own stomach or being someone else's prey. This is a balance in nature. They are the favorite food of seabirds. In order to survive on the mud flat, hiding is just as important as seeking food. Clustering can reduce the chance of being hunted. They are used to watching each other's back. Over thousands of years, the survival skills and tactic understanding have been passed on. The egrets really enjoy their nap time. They know when to take a break. Mud skippers are survival experts. Different from ordinary fish, they can crawl on the mud for food or sunbathing. When they leave the water, they keep water in the mouth as the source of oxygen. Water sources are never far away. They put their tails in the water or roll in the mud to keep the body moisturized and to obtain oxygen at the same time. They're fond of seeking food on the mud flat. Although their abrupt feeding manners often irritate their neighbors, conflicts are inevitable. Those with chele look very strong. The mud skipper raises its dorsal fin as deterrence. Or open the mouth to be more intimidating. They don't really go into a fight. Their bluffing moves look more like they are having fun.
The tide is rising. The mangrove is planting trips for its seeds. The torinids speed up to higher places in the wood. Mud skippers get busy carrying more oxygen into their holes. Fiddler crabs are cleaning their caves to make them more spacious. The egrets are about to call it a day and go back to their shelters. In the coral reef, schools of fish seem full of vigor. Various lives on the shore strictly follow the timetable of the tide. In the harsh and ever-changing environment, they grow with abandon. The tide determines whether they belong on land or return to the sea. Between the tides, all creatures in the coastal zone crisscross and coexist. They build one of the most precious ecosystems in the vibrant coastal zone. <laughs>